All right, so we've got a quick example here with a current controlled current source. So we can see here it has a diamond shape. It's uh, the shape of a dependent power source, whereas here we have the circle shape, which means it's an independent source. So the dependent power source here is going to put out a current that is two times this Ix, and Ix is the current that's just flowing through this resistor. Ix is what we call the controlling current and the current that comes out of this power source is what we call the dependent current. So all we need to do is figure out what this current is, and then we can basically proceed with the problem, and you'll see it's, it's almost exactly the same as the last video. So when we take a look at this, we see the 1.5 amp independent power source here. It's forcing 1.5 amps basically through this whole branch, so that means there's going to be 1.5 amps flowing through from left to right in this resistor. So this is equal to 1.5 amps, and if Ix is equal to 1.5 amps, then 2 times Ix is just going to be equal to 3 amps. So once you figure out what the dependent current is in a problem like this, then it's just, you know, like the, the same as any other simple problem. And we can just go ahead and use KCL, KVL, whatever tools we need um, to solve for all of the resistances and the currents everywhere and the power dissipation and delivered throughout the whole circuit. So let's get started. So we have 1.5 amps coming into this junction right here. We know we have 3 amps coming up into the junction from this guy now. And so if we have 1.5 amps coming in and 3 amps coming in, that means we have to have 4.5 amps flowing out for Kirchhoff's current law to be satisfied. So this 4.5 amps then is going to pass through this whole branch, which means we're going to have 4.5 amps passing through the resistor and also 4.5 amps coming into this junction. Now again we know that there's 1.5 amps in this branch coming through because of the independent power source so there has to be 1.5 coming through this way so we can label that on as well as 1.5 amps and then if we have 4.5 amps going in 1.5 amps coming out then we still need to have 3 amps coming out for KCL as well so we can label that on as 3 amps. You also could have seen that we know there's 3 amps here and this is the same branch so 3 amps gets forced through uh, based on the condition up here. Okay, let's take a look at the voltage drops across each resistor now. So let's look at this one first. We know the current is going from left to right. So that means because of the passive sign convention it's going to have to have a polarity with the positive on the left side and negative on the right side. And Then we can apply Ohm's law which is V equals IR. And so the voltage is just going to be equal to the current, which is just 1.5 amps times 3 ohms. And that gives us a voltage drop of 4.5 volts. We can look at the next one around here as well and see that this has to be the positive and negative side. And when we apply Ohm's law V equals IR, we're just going to see that we get uh, 4.5 amps times 0 0.5 ohms for a total voltage drop of 2.25 volts. Now that is the voltage drop from this node to this node, or basically this point, but this is all one node up here, everywhere that I'm just selecting. So that is 2.25 volts higher than this point, which is all electrically common to these things, so this forms one node as well. So that means this point here is also 2.25 volts less than this point. So we can label this on as well as plus and minus, and this voltage actually applies to both. So then we can go to the last resistor and also just do Ohm's law one last time, V equals IR, so we have 1.5 amps times 6 ohms, and that gives us a voltage drop of 9 volts. This is going to be the positive, and this will be the negative side because the current is entering into the positive side of resistors. So we have the voltage drop across every element except for the independent power source, and we can figure this out a few different ways. The way that I like to do it is just draw a ground on. You can experiment a little bit about where you place it. I know, just because I've already done this problem, that it's going to go here. But if you put it somewhere else and you start getting negative voltages, just keep placing it around on the different nodes until you don't get any negatives. So we set this to zero volts. When we go up across this flow, when we go across this uh, resistor, and we're jumping up 9 volts, so everything in this node is 9 volts higher than ground. So I'll just put a 9 volt over here. Then when we jump over this resistor, we also jump up 2.25 volts, and we also jump up 2.25 volts here, basically to this node. 
So that gives this one uh, 9 plus 2.25 for 11.25 volts higher than ground everywhere on this node. And then when we come across this resistor, we jump up another 4.5 volts. And that puts us for a total of 15.75 volts for this node higher than ground. So really we have plus and minus here, and that's 15.75 volts. You could also do Kirchhoff's voltage law around either of these entering in through the positive and out through the negative, applying opposite signs, and you're going to see that no matter what, when you go around these loops, that it sums back to the original value that you had. So now that we have all of the voltage drops across every element, the next thing that we can do is just solve for the power dissipation and delivery in each element. So let's start with the power dissipation of the resistors. Um, the expression for power is equal to P is equal to VI. This can also be written as P is equal to I squared R, and we can also rewrite P as V squared over R. Any of these will do, but I find it just generally easier to use P equals VI as we don't have this uh, squared term in here. So let's just take each resistor one at a time. Uh, let's start with the top left one, uh, it's 3 ohms, so the power dissipation across that is going to be uh, the voltage, which is 4.5 volts times the current, 1.5 amps, and then that means that we have a power dissipation there of 6.75 watts. Let's take the resistor in the, the right side next, so we have power is equal to the voltage is 2.25 volts times 4.5 amps, and that gives us, through the 0 0.5 ohm resistor, a uh, power dissipation of 10.125 watts. And then for the last one, the 6 ohm resistor, the power dissipation there is just going to be the voltage, 9 volts, times the current, which is 1.5 amps. And that means we have a total power dissipation at that guy of positive 13.5 watts. So if we take the sum of all of these dissipations, we're going to find that to be um, positive 30.375 watts of power being dissipated in the circuit. We can also check the power being delivered to the circuit in the two power sources, and we can apply the same formulas. So if we take a look at the 1.5 amp uh, independent source first, we can just write that its power is also equal to the voltage times current, which is equal to 15.75 volts times negative 1.5 amps. We use negative because the current is flowing into the negative terminal, and this becomes a value of negative 23.625 watts. We can also check the power delivery at the dependent power source, so it's also P equals VI, and that's just going to be equal to the voltage drop, which is 2.25 volts times negative 3 amps, because again the current is entering in through the negative terminal. And this just sums up to negative 6.75 watts. And if we add those together and take the sum of them, we also get negative 30.375 watts. So negative indicates that power is being delivered, and positive indicates that power is being dissipated, but in the overall circuit, the power delivered and dissipated should be equal, or basically net out to zero. So yeah, that's just an example of a current-controlled current source. Basically, all you have to do is once you find the dependent current, then you just treat it like any other problem with multiple power sources. So yeah, that's it. I will see you guys in the next video, and we'll go over another example with a different dependent power source.